if you look at how humans have evolved and learned, we have constantly observed our environment. We need devices that constantly observe humans and based on that, the AI trains and hyper-personalizes to the subject that it is observing. I think we can make really smart, helpful AI agents, but the path to it starts with observation. People are buying more and more compute and saying that we need like billions of dollars to get intelligence. We are like, why? Like, isn't there an alternative approach? We believe that intelligence is going to come from smaller, relatively smaller models that are more hyper-personalized to humans than a large generic model that has all the information in the world. Welcome to uh, another edition of Intelligent Sanskrited. I have with me here a person. He's got both a unique name and a unique company name. Um, welcome Sudarshan Kaman. And the company is called smallest.ai. So I think the title gives it away. <laughs> so you got to tell me, first of all, are you related? Unfortunately, no, or <laughs> not that I'm aware of. <laughs> smallest.ai. Everybody's talking about large language models and you're saying smallest. What does it mean? Me and my co-founder both actually, we come from a background of building self-driving vehicles across Europe, US, Japan, etc. What's your co-founder's name? Akshat. Akshat is my co-founder. He's the CTO. I'm the CEO. And we have been building these self-driving vehicles where you have to take large models on the cloud, put them on device on the vehicle so that it runs on the edge with limited memory constraints. So you essentially make the model really small but the accuracy can't drop because people can die. It's not like an LLM which can hallucinate. So we have seen that small models can really make a large difference. And now that we see that, look, people are buying more and more compute and saying that we need like billions of dollars to get intelligence. We are like, why? Isn't there an alternative approach? And that's, where, that's how we got started. We believe that intelligence is going to come from smaller, relatively smaller models that are more hyper-personalized to humans than a large generic model that has all the information in the world. That's not how we are going to think about intelligence maybe five, ten years down the line. What Apple has been saying in some level that there will be models which run on the phone, be some which run on their private cloud, some run like a GPT. Uh, but when you are saying small, are you talking about phones or are you talking about other possible devices as well? We do think it might start with phones, but phones do not have all the answers to how such an AI can be built. The major thing they lack is observation. A phone does not observe you 24-7. And if you look at how humans have evolved and learned, we have constantly observed our environments. So we need devices, either one or a set of devices that constantly observe humans. And based on that, the AI trains and hyper-personalizes to the subject that it is observing. And that is how I think with a strong teacher, which is the human, it will start localizing and learning and becoming useful. Now, obviously the first question that comes to mind when you say continuous observation is like a big brother watching you all the time. I'm not sure I want to be observed all the time. How, I'm sure people have asked you this. What do you say to that? I think it's like, imagine how humans gained intelligence. When you were a baby, your mother observed you all the time, cared about you, taught you. You had many people around you teaching you stuff. For an AI to learn, you need to care about the AI. If you really want an intelligent AI, you need to care about it. You need to talk to it. You need to let it observe you. Otherwise, it's your choice. So I think we can make really smart, helpful AI agents, but the path to it starts with observation. So in terms of practically when you're talking about this, the way I'm thinking about it, like a, a good example, and we were talking about this earlier, probably would be a CCTV camera, right? Where I've already given it permission to observe me in an office or wherever the environment is. So do you see, and today I don't think anybody's talking about running models on CCTV cameras, but do you imagine a use case where that would be possible? Yeah, I think something similar to a CCTV camera, but not one, a network of cameras that observe you in your most active environments. But the one primary difference is it also has the ability to interact with you, maybe ask questions when it's confused, when it feels the entropy of the environment is a bit high, and that interaction could be through speech or maybe through text, that's fine. But that two-way interactivity with a vision-based observation, I think, is something that will unlock this. Very, very innovative and very new. It's the first time I'm hearing about this concept. But tell me this, what is the, do you have a product in the market? What, what, do you, what, do you, what is it out right now? Right. So I think when the world is moving towards large language models, we are taking a step back and saying, look, there is this different and it, it's not something that's going to immediately happen. Like we, we are thinking it's just, just on the edge. Sure. We don't think like that. We think it's five, ten years away. And the first step to doing this is to build smaller models that run 
on edge devices that run really fast. So we have a speech model. It's a text to speech model. It's one of the world's fastest text to speech models called Lightning that we have built ourselves. You guys name um, products well, man. <laughs> You're like in marketing. <laughs> What's your background? I am just an engineer. So uh, Lightning, wow. So man. Lightning generates uh, 10 seconds of audio in 100 milliseconds. Um, and that's a real time factor of 0 0.01. It's like one of the fastest in the world right now and it generates an English, Hindi, hyper-realistic audio. That is something that we are directly marketing to anyone who is building a voice bot. They can build on top of the Lightning model, make sure the customers have a great experience. So you have actual customer who is using it? Yeah, so we have, some, we have a large e-commerce player in India who is actively using it. We have a large telephony client who is using it. We are in touch with CX platforms in India and US who have started integrating this. Of course, we are fairly young. We are just a year old. But yeah, a lot of potential interest and hopefully we grow. Really That's well. fantastic. If I'm an end user and let's say I, I use the, your e-commerce platform, let's just call it X. How would small SV be figured in that? I make a call to a customer service? Would you yeah, need that? So, so today, yeah, exactly. So today, when let's say you have an issue, you want to know where your order is. You call the e-commerce platform and there is a long wait time or maybe sometimes a human connects and the human is not able to answer. What has started to happen is there is this AI that comes on call and the AI is so realistic that you don't even understand sometimes that it's an AI. It speaks in a hyper-realistic voice that is powered by the smallest uh, model and it answers all the questions that you have, let's say it will give you the status of your order, it will give you an expected delivery time, it can also process refunds, etc. for you. If I'm interacting with this platform X, right, so I call, I say, hey, what about my order? It translates my voice, I could be speaking in a strange accent, into text? Typically, there is a third party that does that. We don't specialize in the speech to text or the intelligence uh, of it, but there is a third party that uh, translates your voice to text. It could have also other information that it extracts from that. And then there is an intelligence layer. It could be a LLM, it could be something else. And finally, our APIs come which convert the answer into speech. And that speech is what you hear as an end user. So you are in the output back yeah. phase of the... Yeah. And this also empowers a lot of creators who want to create voiceovers for Instagram videos, YouTube reels, they generate AI generated voiceovers for the reels. That is also something that we... Uh, Fantastic. Is there a demo that we can watch which demonstrates this, which is how realistic it is? Because ultimately it's going to be not like a robot voice, right? Yeah, there is. Hey, I am Lightning, the fastest text to speech model ever made. I can generate real-time factor with audio generate kar sakti hu. Which means I can generate an entire audio clip of 10 seconds in just 100 milliseconds. Pretty amazing, right? I can speak multiple accents and languages. Mein bol sakti hu. In fact, I can learn a new language from a few And I can mimic any human emotion. Like sometimes I can be happy and excited. Or sometimes I can be sad and dull. इस सब को अनलॉक करने के लिए मुझे आपके डिवाइस में बस थोड़ी सी मेमोरी चाहिए। मैं आपको एक मैस्मराइजिंग ऑडियो एक्सपीरियंस देने के लिए एक्साइटेड हूँ। तो आज ही आइए और मुझे आजमा के देखिए। मैं आपका इंतजार कर रही हूँ। Fantastic. When I was reading about smallest AI, I was talking about you were talking about this geo level revolution, voice technology. What, what do you mean by that? What does it mean to everyday Indians? I think today voice AI is becoming really great. Like the quality of voice is improving. It's also becoming intelligent in some sense, but we don't, like a billion Indians don't talk to AI every day. My mother doesn't speak to an AI every day, maybe uh, sometimes when she wants to play with it, but it's not really useful in her daily life. A geo-level revolution will look like this AI becoming useful to a billion Ind Indians and their personalized context, their daily workflows. It might start coming in small places that they, small things that they do, small habits that they do, and eventually scale to a generic thing that helps them throughout. That, that's just like a partner to them. And not a lot of things are answered yet. I think there is a lot to answer, but that would be the next big jump in intelligence, I think, that we will see. Phenomenal. Have there been any sort of big aha moments when you are adapting AI to especially the Indian community? I think Indians are fairly, uh, a large amount of India is still experiencing AI for the first time. And when they don't believe it, they are like, really, is this really AI? In fact, my own mother, she couldn't believe it when I cloned my voice and I sent it to her. She was like, 
I thought I was just talking to you or you sent me the voice note. They listen to it 10 times compared to, I, I think, someone else who, who we, we stop appreciating. Indians like really appreciate, I think, AI when they see it. That's something that we That's see. a good sign for adoption. Hopefully, we'll take more. Now, one of the things, the whole world is talking about large language models and you are saying smallest. But in terms of performance for very specific tasks, so you, are, you feel like you're outperforming them, like the, the stat think, that you gave? Uh, I think a large language model will always have more neurons to store more information, know more about the world, solve more complex tasks. But intelligence is not just that. Intelligence is how you use that information for a particular use case. So I think there will be different use cases for both. A large language model that answers any question might serve a completely different use case than a small model that is super useful to you. I think that is the major difference. I don't think we should compare them. I think they, they'll both uh, coexist at yeah. some level. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot about this, but tell me about your background and, and your co-founder's background. How did you guys come about this? So, I come from Pune. I have been born in Mumbai, brought up in Pune. I'm Konkani speaking originally. I went to IIT Guwahati. I was fortunate enough to get a decent rank in JE. And I studied mechanical engineering, but I used to code from 10th standard. So I have been pretty much like a hardcore engineer. I love computers, go deep into it. So I spent the first five, six years of my life building in AI. I met my co-founder in college. We were batchmates in, in IIT Guwahati. And then we also worked together in a company where we were building self-driving vehicles. I also have some experience working in early stage startups. Some of them got acquired, some of them we failed, but eventually like we had this idea that we wanted to start something together and last year october we both decided to take the plunge and uh, we had saved enough money so we were like let's do it let's do it bootstrapped but here we are I, we've grown to a team of 10 plus people now and doing decently i think now as a founder when you sort of look forward i mean if we were to have this conversation like five years later what change in in the indian society that ai you think would make about that you would be most proud of i think if indians don't even realize that they're using ai that's going to be the next bit. like we don't even realize we are googling something right <laughs> like it's i'm googling oh just search on google or just g pay him right like or phone pay him, whatever so if we just ai comes in our workflow where we don't even realize, oh, that's AI. We don't even talk about the technology anymore. We talk about the thing that it's enabling us to do. I think that's going to be the next, I mean, amazing thing that can and happen. And you think some of the smallest kind of uh, type of models would solve some, what's like an everyday problem, like from your mother's point of view, that you can think I that think smallest would solve? My mother really struggles with technology. Even if she has to recharge her phone, she will call me. I would be successful if there is an AI who can just answer anything related to technology very reliably, securely for her and just solve all of her problems. And she is also bad with a smartphone interface. So voice is a perfect medium for her to interact with AI. So if that happens, I'll be happy. She's still going to call you every day. But <laughs> one thing you guys have done is not only this 100 milliseconds for a 10 second audio, but you're also offering it at a pretty compelling price. What is the price you're offering that? We offer it at around a minute, one, one rupees a minute, and it's it drops even further as we scale. And how much would it compare to, a, let's say, 11 lakh? It's or something? around 18 rupees a minute. And how did you get to that price point when others were costing much? The more? cost uh, uh, is directly attributed to the compute that it takes. And because we use smaller models, our model is less than a gigabyte in memory. In fact, much less. It allows us to essentially scale a lot without having to pay a bomb. The so sheer size of your, of the, your model. The sheer size of the model. Now, one of the things that uh, you've done is to build one of the world's largest uh, Discord communities uh, on, on speech AI. Tell us more about that. When we started building uh, in speech or in general also when we started with AI, we found it very difficult to learn about how do I even train a model, right? And that's not something I think we, are, we have been very successful at, at least we were not five years ago. Now there is a lot of course material coming out, Coursera, there is uh, NPTEL, but we still see a gap between the practitioners of AI and those who are just entering into AI. So that's how it started. It just started with just a genuine effort to talk to the community, people who we are hiring or potentially can get internships and just help them learn, do projects and stuff like that. 
Eventually, it grew to thousands of people and it's constantly growing, like it grows almost 20-20% every month. Speech AI particularly is also much, much more niche. We think like speech AI, like there is a lot of academic work, industrial work that is not yet translated to educational material. That is also something we will hopefully bridge through this community. And today the languages you support are? Currently we support Hindi and English only. We are expanding to European languages and also some top Indian languages. All right, so we're going to go into the lightning round. So complete this sentence. The biggest misconception about AI in India is? Large models are needed to build AI. So the best non-tech skill that is surprisingly crucial for building AI companies is? Talking to people, I guess I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure. Spoken like a true engineer. <laughs> and, and what is the best non-technical lesson that you've learned? People matter. I mean, uh, you need good people around you to build good products. What's the stereotype about AI in India that makes you laugh? Either because it's true or totally false. That AI is going to solve, completely replace jobs and everything like that. That's not going to happen. It's, it's going to assist us. So what is a prediction about AI that sounds totally crazy right now, but you're willing to bet will come true? We are going to have a billion AI models that are going to run on edge devices instead of a couple of large language models that run on the cloud. You got it. You should market your own company. <laughs> now, when you go to people abroad and talk to European customers or US, what is the thing that they misunderstand about the Indian tech. They think uh, there is a lot of copy pasting that's happening, but that's not true. There is a lot of innovation that's happening here. I think we should do a better job at marketing ourselves that I think we have started doing now. Complete this sentence. Everyone in enterprise AI is pretending to know. Uh, the use case they want to solve. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. If AI was an employee, how much would you pay? I wouldn't want to pay him. Otherwise, I would I hire a human if I'm paying. So. <laughs> him or her. Him, okay. him or her. <laughs> Total pleasure talking to you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bro. Thanks a lot for having me.